U.S. President Joe Biden has authorized Ukraine to use long-range Atoms missiles on Russian territory for the first time. This decision comes two months before the end of his presidential term, according to the New York Times. According to officials, the weapon will likely be used initially to protect Ukrainian forces in the Kursk region. The New York Times notes that Biden's decision represents a significant shift in U.S. policy. This choice divided his advisors and came just two months before the inauguration of the elected president, Donald Trump, who promised to limit further support for Ukraine. Officials stated that the authorization for Ukraine to use long-range missiles, known as Army Tactical Missile Systems, was given in response to Russia's unexpected decision to deploy North Korean troops in combat. While officials have said they do not expect a drastic change in the course of the war. One of the aims of the policy shift is to send a message to North Korea that their forces are vulnerable and that they should not send more troops. Officials noted that while Ukrainian forces are likely to first use the missiles against Russian and North Korean troops threatening Ukrainian forces in the Kursk region, Biden may allow them to use this weapon in other areas. Some U.S. officials have expressed concerns that Ukraine's use of missiles across the border could provoke Russian dictator Vladimir Putin to take retaliatory action using force against the U.S. and its coalition partners. However, other U.S. officials have dismissed these concerns as exaggerated. It is worth noting that this week, Ukrainian Foreign Minister Andriy Sibiha held a conversation with U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, during which the issue of permission for long-range strikes was discussed. Following the meeting, Sibiha mentioned that there is cautious optimism regarding this decision. Recall, France and Britain have allowed Ukraine to strike deep within Russian territory using their scalp and storm shadow missiles. This decision was made following approval from the United States, informs Le Figaro. Following the approval from U.S. President Joe Biden's administration for long-range strikes on the Russian Federation, France and Britain have also authorized the use of their weapons by Ukraine. As a result, the Ukrainian armed forces can now carry out strikes deep within Russian territory using not only Atoms but also Scalp and Storm Shadow missiles. The problem of the deficit of junior officers is getting worse in Russia. In connection with this, military training centers for platoon commanders, artillery battery commanders and deputy company commanders are being created on the basis of civilian universities in the Russian Federation. This was reported by the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. Russia's large-scale losses at the front among junior officers are forcing the Russian Federation to make further attempts to expand the scope of their training, the GUR stated. It is noted that by the end of 2024, Russia plans to launch 33 new military training centers in addition to the almost 100 existing ones. Such activation of Russian leaders indicates that the personnel crisis of the command staff of the occupied army is worsening, the GUR added. They also emphasized that a junior officer in the Russian army primarily serves as an infantry driver for an assault directly on the battlefield, which explains the high level of losses and the acute shortage of lieutenants in the Russian Federation. Recall, Russia aims to increase its armed forces to 1.5 million personnel, largely to justify higher military spending. The Kremlin, however, faces difficulties achieving this target. As the war in Ukraine continues to cause tremendous casualties, rapidly depleting Russia's supply of manpower. Despite stable enrollment numbers in military academies and recruitment from civil universities, Russia continues to struggle with a shortage of low- and mid-ranking officers. The temporary growth of the officer corps, fueled by the partial mobilization, may reverse once mobilization ends. Moscow is expanding military schools and programs for children and teenagers, aiming to create a Soviet-style military system that can be quickly mobilized despite the technological weaknesses of Russia's military-industrial complex. The Russian High Command has been trying to increase recruitment in military colleges, institutes, universities and academies since the second half of the 2010s. 
These tactics alone, however, will not solve the manpower issue for the foreseeable future. Thus, the Russian military leadership is trying to recruit more future officers from among the students at civil universities and among the existing contracted soldiers and non-commissioned officers. Besides military colleges, universities and institutes, the Kremlin has increased the number of military training centers in Russian civil universities. A Ukrainian brigade made up of thousands of soldiers trained in France and armed with French-supplied light battle tanks, artillery and heavy weaponry is about to enter the fight against Russia. According to Business Insider, the Anne of Kiev brigade, a nod to the medieval Ukrainian princess who became queen of France, has just completed over two months of rigorous training with French military forces in eastern and southern France. The troops operated under the French Army's Champagne Task Force, designed to prepare the nation's allies. The 2,000 Ukrainian troops who trained in France will return equipped with French-supplied tanks, artillery and heavy weaponry, while additional troops undergo training in Ukraine. This combined force could provide Kyiv with a formidable new unit to counter Russian advances in eastern Ukraine. Our French partners have provided our soldiers not only with high-quality general and specialized training, but also with modern equipment and weapons, armored personnel carriers, self-propelled artillery systems, trucks, situational awareness systems and other necessary equipment. The Defense Ministry of Ukraine, Rustem Umarov, stated, French President Emmanuel Macron announced this brigade's training in France in early October 2024. I have made this commitment. Our military is now training 2,300 Ukrainian soldiers in Grand Est with the equipment they will use during their missions. Macron said, posting footage from the training, the entire brigade was being trained in France at once, and it was also fully equipped with the French weapons with which the soldiers were trained. It's also set to have 18 AMX-10 light tanks, 18 truck-mounted Caesar artillery pieces, 128 armored troop carriers, as well as anti-tank and anti-aircraft missile systems. According to the French military, France often refers to the AMX-10 as a light tank, but it is widely seen as an armored combat and reconnaissance vehicle. Before they traveled to France, most of the soldiers had only a few weeks basic training. The French military said, according to the AP, a French colonel told the outlet, they have improved a lot. Now they are able to fight. They are able to maneuver. They are able to use the different specialists and to use the different equipment they will have on the battlefield. The Ukrainian military is also training other troops for the brigade back in Ukraine. French authorities said 